Well, I'm doing a trial fitting of the chair components at the moment, so these are the arm assembly. So I've got my front arm posts, and what I'm essentially trying to do is to get all the little spindles lined up so I can do glue up. And there's also the under rail as well, where I've had to do quite a bit of accurate drilling in. Anyway, I think it's going all right. It's typical kind of thing, this. You have a go at getting everything lined up, and then you find your holes are all very slightly different sizes because your spindles are all different diameters. But it's going fine, and I think I'm now ready for glue up. I've done a test fit while it's dry, so I'm going to go ahead now and get the glue on. It's worth just saying a quick thing about the drill bits, actually, for this final stage. Um, the material I'm joining is obviously the half-inch little side stretchers and they're quite delicate and I find drilling with a falsener bit when it's a very small hole it actually wanders a lot so it's not the best drill I don't think for doing the fine work and I prefer to use the brad point drills so that's the one with a little pointy tip because you can center those really accurately because of their pointy tip that brad tip and it's far easier to get a nice accurate hole so, just a little tip, but one worth bearing in mind if you're doing some fairly delicate spindle type work. The glue up's complete now and the chair is having a nice dry in the sunshine, which will also dry out the rush seat. I'm just giving the chair a nice coat of Danish oil at the moment, so it's the usual Danish oil mix. I've given it a light sanding first, so I just use some ordinary sandpaper, fairly fine grade. And also I find these little foam pads quite good, like an emery come sandpaper on the sides, because they actually get round corners and get round things. So anyway, going to get this coat on and see how it goes. I think it will need about four coats, but it's nice. You see the first coat go on and you can see all the nice grain coming through and all the nice little detailing. And it does look nice. It gives it a lovely luster. So I'll get a few of these coats on. I do need to give it quite a bit of time to dry between coats. So probably four coats, uh, get a nice day like today, it will dry a lot quicker. But I'll give a few days between coats, get it nice and hard, and then give it a little gentle sand between coats, look for any blemishes and get them dealt with. And that way we get a nice finish. Well, I've now applied the full first coat of oil. So that's giving all the grain that lovely look that I like. It's brought out very nicely actually, it's not sent the ash too dark either, which is a slight concern I had. And at least the bright sunlight now, it's showing up every little minor defect. So I can deal with that, can sand it off or whatever. Anyway, get, get, let that dry out now properly. It's another lovely sunny day today, so it's an ideal time to have the chair out in the sunlight and just try and go over in the areas where they're little marks. So all I'm doing, I'm just giving it a little bit of sandpaper just to remove any obvious blemishes and then give it the next coat of Danish oil. Some of the sort of marks I get on these, it's where glue spilt over, so it's quite easily dealt with. And um, it's worth trying to just get it to look right because then it will have this lovely luster for the whole of its life. <laughs> One of the tools I find quite useful just for cleaning up woodwork generally, it's the scraper. And I mean, you can get them in various shapes and sizes. And um, I just prefer them to sandpaper. I mean, I do use sandpaper quite a bit for cleaning up jobs. But these scrapers, all I do, I have got a ticketer somewhere, which is just a basically a metal rod on a handle. <laughs> I don't know where I've put it. So you can just use any fairly hard bit of metal. And all I do is just put a bit of a burr on the edge of the scraper just by rubbing the metal bar over it. And you can feel a little burr. Oops, sorry about the noise. You can feel a little burr coming on. I don't know if that's enough or not. It is almost. I'll just do a little bit more on there. I'll just push, push it over a bit. And you get a nice little burr forming. Hopefully you can just see that burr on the camera. 
And if you can't see it, you can probably hear it with my thumb. It's just enough, it's just a little tiny bend over and it's just enough to actually take a little sort of scraping of wood off. Makes it very effective as a little tool, <laughs> a lot cheaper than sandpaper. And um, well, I like it, so you, you're left with very fine scraping marks rather than sandpaper marks. So to me, it's a far more sort of traditional way of doing things. Anyway, that's the scraper. I'll just show you on the chair. So one or two bits I want to just scrape a little and give you an idea. So here I've got a little bit of glue residue. We're on quite a high zoom here, but I think you can probably see what I mean. And just a little scrape. It's just enough to take off a little fragment of the wood. And in this case, a bit of the Danish oil as well, actually, just to get that cleaned off. Again, in this little corner, a little bit of glue there. Now that would be quite difficult to get sandpaper in there, but with a scraper, one can just scrape away a few little fragments and get rid of that glue. And there's less risk of the oil going on the rush. Now I'm just getting rid of one or two more final nicks and then I'll get my third coat of Danish oil on. I always find finishing, it goes a little bit sort of, you put some oil on and you think, oh dear, that's showing up a blemish there. And you do that two or three times. So it may seem a bit odd me saying, I'm gonna put my third coat, you know, on, and I'm still doing nicks, but they come out and you see them more. And um, I'll, I can dab over where I've done a bit more sort of scraping and sanding. I can put a bit more Danish oil. So then it will all look lovely and smooth and you won't see the sort of the difference in layers. So <laughs> it's worth taking a bit of effort at this stage because with green woodworking, you do leave quite a lot of tool marks and other marks. And it's nice to get them out if you're leaving the wood in its otherwise natural state, which is what I'm doing here. So I think I'm, I think I am nearly there now, actually. I've been inspecting it closely. I've got a little bit up there still. You can get a bit sort of paranoid and it's not end of the day it's a country chair so you don't want to lose all its character but it's nice to get rid of the obvious marks and keep it looking good and the best one can get it reasonably so I think that's fine I'll get another coat of oil on this now that's another coat applied now so I'll let that dry for probably a couple of days and then give it a final sort of check over I think I think I am nearly there now actually with the coats I don't want to overdo it, it's hitting a balance really between making it a nice durable sort of finish and um, overdoing it. So <laughs> it is quite important with this Danish oil to let it dry between the coats, otherwise, you know, it just becomes a gloopy mess. So as I say, I, I, I will let that dry off now. Well, I'm now sitting in a completed chair and it feels very comfortable indeed. The arms really do come round and hold you nicely and the seat feels good. I feel it's a well-designed chair actually, I do like it. Certainly enjoyed making it. I'll show you a few clips close up now of the chair, just so you can see the finished product. Well, here's the finished chair, and I do like the sort of light, delicate lines it has. It's funny really, because you've got the really heavy front clumpy arm supports, but you sort of get away with it in the design. It is very clever, it's got these nice lighter elements that really balance it out. The rush seat does give it a very nice natural sort of finish and my cat certainly loves the smell of that rush. I'm pleased with my, that's my second attempt at rush making and I've even got it looking really very respectable underneath. The pole laving of these arms was quite tricky because they go down to such a thin taper down here. I did end up draw knifing some of that but again it's good fun to have these sorts of challenges. I do like the contrast on the very thin spindles and then you get the slightly thicker arm. It's this sort of detail that I think makes it lovely. And when you look at the chair from above, I do like the way that curves round nicely. You get those arms and the back all meeting as curves. The little turnings at the back, which as I say were from my sister's a uh, yew tree which got honey fungus and she had to prune it rather heavily but they're, they're quite good fun and the finish of course it's the Danish oil finish which I think does come up quite nicely and if that will mature with a bit of wax on it it will end up I think looking very nice 
the colour of the ash. It goes slightly less in white, so it becomes a slightly towards a yellower sheen, but it's not to me an artificial yellow, it's quite a nice natural coloured yellow. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this series and enjoyed watching the chair being made. I'm certainly pleased with the way it's come out. I did decide not to ebonise it in the end because I wanted to do a slightly more modern take. As you know, I have done a video on ebonising and I did research the ebonising, but I think for more modern taste, having it the light natural colours, well, to me, is quite appealing anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed this series and um, thanks again for all your comments along the way. It's nice to get feedback as it goes through. And I hope um, <laughs> you've perhaps learnt one or two things from watching this, if only how not to do it in places, and perhaps inspire you to have a go at something. Anyway, thanks for watching.